Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and in this video we're going to wrap up the work on Old Sporty. In the previous video we actually painted the fenders in the front, the bulkhead but also the rear tub. Now some of you asked me why did I not film the spray job itself. Well the reason for that is in the previous video I actually showed you on how to paint the nose cone and the rear fenders. That's why I didn't want it to do a repetition. But in this video we're going to go back to the old um, menu or recipe for making a video where we're going to take you through all the individual steps I'm going to be doing on this vehicle. Well, in this video we're going to install the nose cone, the locking mechanism, the blinkers. We're also going to install the bonnet or the hood and the latches. We'll polish the bonnet and the hood because I can't polish it when it's off the car because it's a bit too flaky. Then we'll install the windscreen, we're going to install the interior, the seats, the carpets and then we're going to work on the rear tub where we want to install the, uh, the box or the baggage box but also we'll have to work a bit on the fuel system. In other words, how do I fill up the fuel tank because they did some pretty weird stuff on this fuel tank to fill it up. So the first thing we're going to do is to install the nose cone. And I already have it bolted down to the chassis in the front and there are actually two screws that you have to put up, one on this side and one on the other side. And I'm supporting it with a support with a blanket on so I don't scratch it because otherwise it's going to fall down. Uh, the reason that I'm doing it like this is that I still have to put the, the locks or the hatches up on this side and I also have to install the blinkers. On the nose cone we have to fit first of all the blinkers and these are the blinkers. Uh, it's just a piece of metal and it's riveted onto the nose cone itself. And then of course the connectors, I had to cut them off uh, when I removed it uh, because I couldn't get it to the hole otherwise. So we have to put new connectors up. And these are the connectors that are we, we're going to connect to the cables. So then we can plug it into the already existing um, female connector that we have on the vehicle. The blinkers themselves are still in a fairly good state. They are not perfect, but still good enough. Uh, so I'm going to keep those. Uh, I, I don't want to replace them to chrome while it's actually plastic based chrome. It doesn't look too bad, but it's still a bit pitted. But still, I'm, I'm going to keep them. I, I, I was thinking about getting LED blinkers, but I didn't do it. So I'm going to keep it as original as I can when it was built. And then we still have the locks to lock the nose cone into place. And these are spring loaded locks and you need to turn them and those are also riveted onto the cone so i have to use some small rivets uh, to put all that up so that's the first thing we're going to do right now the first thing we're going to do is to install the locks and i'm going to pre-position the lock with both holes fitted with rivets already so i know it is already more or less in the right spot and then use the riveting pliers actually to put them really into place. There we go. And now that we have both locks in place on both sides, I can actually close the nose cone. Let me show you where it fits. There we go. And now I should be able to grab it and twist it and it's locked. And here's the nose cone solidly into place. The only thing left now is to bolt it really down on the bottom on both sides and then we'll install the blinkers. I already have one blinker installed on one side but we'll install the other blinker on the other side in a few seconds. The blinkers go on the side and there's a big hole that's where the wires go through and then the two smaller holes that's where the rivets go in. And I'm gonna have a look where that is more or less. I will place the rivet in just to hold it in place and see if everything is in the right location and it seems like it is 
And now I'm just going to rivet that down with my pliers. There we go, that should be good. And then we'll fit the lens cap. So we are not done yet, we need to open up the cone again and unlock it because we need to connect the wires for the blinkers and we haven't done that so far. So I need to hold that a bit. Let the rest on the support. What I always like to do is to thin the wires before I put the connectors up and I'm just putting some soldering flux up to make the solder go easier and flow better. Put some solder up. And now we're going to put the connectors up. And for that I'm using just a plier that I can squeeze. There we go. There we go. And now that is done. So now I've got my two connectors properly set up and they can be connected to the plug. The next step is to install the bonnet or the hood. And for that I only have locks. There's a lock there, there's a lock here. And the bonnet just rests on the nose cone and on the bulkhead. And then on the sides I have some latches to hold it in place. Now since I don't know how good it will fit, because it wasn't fitted uh, very well when I got it, and with all the changes we've done, I'm going to try it out first. And in order to protect the paint a bit, I'm going to place some paper across the areas where the bonnet will fit. And that's just because the paint is fairly new, so I don't want to scratch anything. And here is the bonnet. That's a very thin aluminum bonnet. So let's see if we can fit this properly or not. And without scratching anything. That seems to be fitting reasonable well. So here I can lock it. So let me remove that paper now so I can actually see where it fits or where it doesn't fit. And in the front we gotta do exactly the same. So the bonnet hasn't been polished yet and it's aluminum and it has two little dents, one here and one there and I don't think I'm going to get them out so I will leave those dents in for what they are. After all it's not a brand new car. But I would have loved it to get them out but that's not going to happen I think and there's another little dent here and they are very hard to get out in aluminum um, because it is actually stretched so um, I'm just going to leave it as is. And now we're going to start polishing the bonnet. And to polish the bonnet, I'm going to use an aluminum cleaner that will make it really shiny. So I'm going to give you a little example on how I'm going to clean this. Go, and I'm just going to use a piece of paper now and rub it in. And you will see after a while it's going to get black or dark. And I know it's a little bit of rubbing but the result will be fairly nice. Now you can use a polisher for that if you like. And you will see it coming in a few seconds. See that mirror finish coming? And that's how we're going to clean it. So I'm going to continue buffing the hood or the bonnet and then we're going to install the windscreen but I'm not going to keep you busy with you watching me on how I'm going to buff up the bonnet. So, I'll see you in a few minutes. And now it's time for the window frame and we will do two things. I'm going to clean the glass with glass cleaner and then we clean up the frame, uh, which is aluminum. The same way we polished the bonnet. Luckily there's not a lot of work to be done on the window frame. So let's flip it over and do the other side. The mirrors are, are functional but they are really dirty and in fact a lot of the chrome is actually pitted. But let's see if we can get it cleaned up. I'm going to use the same product that I used before to clean up the bonnet because this is really good stuff and uh, let's see if we can get it all cleaned up or not. So 
but let's start with the mirror itself. I know it's aluminum polisher, but it works on most metals. And I think this is quite alright. That's good enough. So now let's continue with the frame. So now let's have a look how clean we can get this frame. But this is most likely varnished, so we may not be able to get it very clean. But let's try it out anyway. So that looks quite alright, so I will continue with it. So let's install the window frame and hopefully we don't make any scratches. Alright, let's see. To stretch it a bit. Okay, and that should be about it. And let's see if we can align it. And now I can bolt it all down and adjust the rim here by pushing it in and locking down the whole tub. And what we certainly don't want to miss is the Union Jack. Now, I removed all the colors on it because I like it blank. And the next thing is sorting out the dashboard, cleaning it up, uh, fit the steering wheel properly because that looks a bit tacky for the moment. I don't know what this funny looking plate is, so I have to rework that panel with some nice aluminum. Uh, we'll have to put the horn up and then we'll mount all this, but we'll also have to clean up some of the bezels uh, or the edges of the dials. Um, this is a little bit uh, rusted, not a lot. The other ones are okay, but this one has, has to be restrained. Then we'll fix the tunnel here. We vacuum cleaning everything. We will re-glue the carpets because some of them are loose. And then we put back the seats. And then we should be kind of done with the interior, except that we still would have to put the mirror in here and have that laying on the side. And then we'll start working on the rear fenders and then on the rear top and then on the gas tank because that's a bit special. So let us start with the steering wheel and this is mounted in a very strange way and I already have it disassembled once. But you can see this weird thin metal plate here. It's like an intermediate panel between the steering wheel itself and the flange in the back. So let's take this apart because we really need to clean this up and fix this. So if that goes off like so, and you can see that panel behind it. And then there's this panel here, which is holding the steering wheel. And then the light metal one is then bolted down to this panel. And then all this is bolted down to this part. All that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, I already have removed the bolt here, or <clears throat> I already have removed the nut here, so I can take this off. And let me take that off. Here we go. And then in the back we have a washer. You see this washer here? This is way too big, way too much place. So that's the first thing we're going to do is to build a new washer for this. And then uh, we'll fix this whole thing. Uh, I'm going to create a new panel that fits perfectly on this. And then the steering wheel will go on there and I'm going to bolt it down on it, right? So. I'm going to remove this intermediate panel and I'm going to bolt down the steering wheel straight onto a new panel that's going to go on here. 
and I'm going to bolt it down by drilling holes and then putting thread in it. So this is what we're going to do guys. And first of all we're going to fix the washer down. Let's have a look what the exact diameter is and that looks like 18 and a half. So I'm going to need a washer with a diameter in the middle of 18.5 mil. Now I don't have one like this and I don't think you can find them that easily so we're going to create one um, and that's why I'm using an existing washer and I'm using my lathe uh, for that. Uh, you can use it on a drill uh, but I like the lathe better because you have more control on it and I already have my bit fitted which is an 18.5 mil and now it's just a matter of drilling that out. And that should be it, that should fit just perfect. So let's give it a try. And now that's gonna fit, there's no more play on this one. This is the part we're going to keep because I need this to put it onto the steering rod. Then we had this piece of metal that was fitted on top of that initially and then the steering wheel was bolted onto that. Now that I'm not gonna keep, I'm gonna get rid of this part and I don't even know why they drilled the big hole in there like this. And instead, I'm going to create a new panel, a solid panel, that will be bolted down to this. And then in that new panel, which is going to be about two to three millimeters thick, I'm going to drill some holes and tap some tread in it. So I can actually then bolt down the steering wheel onto that panel. So I don't need this intermediate kind of flungy kind of thing that's sitting here. So first of all, I'm going to cut out a piece of metal that will fit on here. So that's the metal plate and this is about three millimeters thick and I'm just going to make a mark where I'm going to cut it and you can cut this whatever way you want to. You can use a jigsaw, you can use a grinder, whatever works for you. And this is the panel that we just cut out and I already grinded it off a little bit but as you can see it fits quite nice so now the idea is that we go going to mark the holes here and then drill it so we can mount this uh, plate onto this um, surface but first of all now we'll remove some parts on the old steering wheel so let me remove all these little nuts here and then hopefully we can remove this crazy panel This is one piece of junk, isn't it? Look at that. And how thin it is. And these will be the bigger holes um, to hold this panel onto that old panel. And I think that's looking quite all right. So this is our base plate and now I'm going to put the steering wheel on it and center it as much as I can so that I can mark the holes where I need to drill little holes and then put some thread into it. There we go. I've drilled all the holes to connect the steering wheel and these are the little screws that we're going to use for that but in order to put the screws in I'm going to need to tap some thread in all these holes. Let's put some cutting oil on and we can start to cut the first hole or put some thread in the first hole I should say. We're going to give it a lick of paint. So I've got all the parts now built and painted, so now we're going to assemble the steering wheel. So first of all, we're going to put up the new washer and that should now be a nice fit. There we go. 
And now we're going to put up the main part of the steering wheel. Now you got to make sure that the wheels are pointing straight forward and that you mount this properly. Otherwise, uh, you're going to be driving with the steering wheel a bit uh, out of um, its direction. So I actually already marked a little marker there and I checked with the wheels to see if everything was all right and everything is okay. So that's good. So now I'm going to put another washer up inside and then we're going to lock down that hub. Because you don't want this to do funny stuff. You don't want this to loosen up while you drive. Steering wheel is very important. So let's see if I can tighten that up. Now the whole thing is going to turn, of course. But that's okay. Until the end. Eventually it will stop. And that's pretty tight. So that's good. I'm going to turn the back. I might glue that later on, uh, but right now uh, I'm going to leave it as is and see now, there we go, that's straight. So now um, I'm going to mount this plate that I have here, right? So that's the next thing we need to do. You might see the blue spot in the middle. I did that by purpose uh, because I wanted to have a blue circle in the middle of the steering wheel. So let me get the bolts so we can put this up. Okay, so I put the nuts in the back and I'm going to put actually two nuts up, so a counter nut, so it certainly can't get loose. But for now I think this is uh, good enough. And now I should be able to fit the steering wheel properly, like so. Right, and for that I need these little screws that I already prepared for which we drilled the holes and let's see if we can fit that. That should fit quite easily. Alright, there we go. So I can tighten them all down now and then we can see how good it looks. And I think this looks like a lot better than what it was. And that's it for the steering wheel. I still have to tighten up all the bolts. So the gas tank is a bit of an awkward thing. They fit it in a large aluminum tank, which is a good thing, but then they couldn't figure out on how you would fill it. So instead of cutting some of this tube off and then feeding it back through the hole here where the normal filler is, or the filler cap is, they didn't do that. They, they left that blank and they created some kind of a hose like this and they just slide it in there, really weird, and they pushed it in there and they had some silicone in. So now uh, this is sitting in the luggage compartment, so each time you need to fill up the car, you need to open up the luggage compartment and then try to open this up and, and I think this looks real bad. Along the same lines, the overflow is just laying around here and that's no good either. I, I don't want that to have laying around. Uh, if it has to have an overflow, then I will have to leak it out underneath the car to the ground and not inside the car itself. So that's going to be a little bit of that adaptation. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to grind off most likely some of this aluminum tubing here. Actual filling area is on the side here and I already have a hose fitted to it. So what I'm going to do is use some of those silicon hoses and slide it in there as really deep. So that's a long way in. And then I'm going to put some uh, Tech 7 along that side. And then I will hook it up to this hose right here, which is coming from the outside. But as you can see, um, this hose is sitting too high. So I'm going to cut some of this aluminum away. See that? I already marked it. So I'm going to cut that away. Now this is aluminum, so it's not going to spark. So that's the good thing uh, for the fuel. So I don't, I'm not going to get a fire or anything like that. And um, 
I'm going to cut it out along this white line so I can lower that quite a bit. Now before I do that I will put something in the tube here. So this is another tube. I filled it up with paper so nothing can get in and it can't fall in either So because I put some tape up. So now I can grind this out with my Dremel and then uh, we can fit the hoses. So let's start cutting it. Um, that should work fairly easy. Okay, so let's uh, see if this is going to work or not. I'll put the Dremel on. So let's have a look how that happened and that looks already quite all right. So let's give it a try and see how deep I can get it now. So the way we're going to put it together uh, is like this right? and that should be quite all right and this looks okay and now all I have to do now is tighten this up but the hose that goes into the gas tank I'm going to use some special glue for that to make sure that it doesn't leak. All right, so here is the glue. And that should go in quite all right. And I'll move it all the way in. And then I will hook this up. And don't forget to tighten it up because otherwise I have to disconnect everything again. Okay. And I think this is looking quite all right. Uh, so I'm going to tighten this up. And I think this is looking quite all right now. The only thing left now is to feed out back this hose. For that one, I will put up a new hose and then we'll feed it out through the hole. And I'm going to seal up the top part here. Not that it's really necessary, but that's just me. And I also painted the bezel of the RPM meter and um, I didn't remove it completely out of the car because that was not really necessary. It worked with a piece of paper like this. I just pulled it out partially. So that saved me a lot of hassle because uh, there was a lot of wires that I had to cut and I put new connectors up and all that. So I, I didn't want to do that. So now I can just pull this off. And if you do this careful, then it will look all right. You know, just give it some time and do it carefully. There we go. Uh, there's a bit of dirt there, but I can clean that up. So the instrument cluster is all cleaned up and all functioning. So now we will continue with the carpets. And I glued the carpets into place and then I put some clamps up. I didn't show you on how I glued it, but that's just putting some glue between the board and the carpet and then putting some clamps up. And I used some wood to you know, squeeze it all along, equally along the side. So nothing really special. So we've done already a lot of things and now it's around 10 o'clock in the evening. So I'm going to stop working and uh, get my dinner and then we continue tomorrow. Morning y'all and today we're going to continue on Old Sporty. Uh, I haven't been able to finish last night, but today we're going to wrap up the uh, cockpit and then we'll install the fenders. Now in the cockpit there is a little bit of work to be done. I have already inserted this speedometer cable and it's kind of a weird fit because um, none of this car is standard so I had to work it my own way and I had to cut an opening in this panel here, put a grommet and then slide the cable through it and then put an enforcement plate back up with car bond. So um, that should be okay. Um, it's a bit weird that it's sitting in the footwell where the passengers or the driver sits, but yeah, it is what it is. So now we're going to install the tunnel and I have removed some ugly cover that was on here. That was actually on here and I removed it and replaced it with a fixed aluminum plate and I, I like bare aluminum, 
it's a personal taste of course. Uh, so let's put it in the car and see how well it fits. In the back there is a supporting lip for the tunnel and somebody bended it all over because they had fitted a box inside the tunnel and that was hitting this. So I straightened that up a bit again and now I'm going to put some Velcro on it so I can actually tie down the tunnel or have the tunnel supported on it. Now let me degrease that first and then Velcro is a, I think a very nice product to use. And that way the tunnel will have its uh, support and it won't rattle. I think that's the most important part. And the mating part is going to go, of course, on the tunnel itself. All right, so let's put the tunnel up and see how well it fits. Uh, we may have to fiddle around with it a bit. I'm not sure, but we'll find out real soon. before I really push it into place, I want to make sure that the eyelets for the uh, safety belts are in the right spot. And these are the uh, eyelets where the seat belts go in. And before we put the carpets all back together, we need to put a couple of screws up to hold the tunnel in place. Let's see if I can get the gator on. Um, all right, that looks like it's a fit. And since I like blue stuff, I'll put the piece of plastic up and then we hold it all together with the knob. I think this looks good. And to hold the carpets into place on the floor, but also where the carpets overlap, I'm using double-sided tape. That's very handy stuff. And you can always pull it away later. If you glue it with some contact glue, then yeah, it's gonna be tough when you pull it away and you're probably gonna damage the carpet. That's why I'm using this kind of a tape. Works really well. Now I'm connecting the seat belts, and these are four point seat belts. There we go. And I'm going to place them on the side so I can fit the seats properly. So now we're going to install the seats. And that's something I don't really like to do. Uh, it's always a problem to get them in the right spot. I never have had a lot of luck with that. So I gotta find the holes and you can't see where they are. So that's always a bit the problem. So we have to move it around a bit until it really falls into place. Alright, so now we're going to install the fender and for that we have to remove the wheel first. So here is the fender. And now that's a little bit of fiddling to see where it fits. And I think it's like this. So I'm going to put in a bolt first just to hold it in place. I'm not going to bolt it down completely. Just enough that it doesn't move anymore. That's one. And I think number two is over here. So now I need to put the seal up. And that's why I didn't bolt it down the bolts yet. So I still have some time to put the seal in. And that is not right. I can see that. So I need 
needs to go a bit further. I think this is right now. And that's where it's supposed to be. And while we're bolting down the fender, I'm going to push down that seal. I'm going to work my way down like this. But here it's not right. The way I mount the lights is basically first taping it up to the fender and making sure that all the holes align. So that's why I have these screws all in there very loosely. I also marked the, um, the holders for the lights individually, one, two, and then number three with an arrow on it so I know exactly where it goes. And then I can now install this without having to worry about that the holes are not going to fit. Let's see if we can fit it. And now comes the tricky part. I have to fit the wiring loom from the back through the fender right in these um, sockets here. So since the wires are not thinned, I'm going to thin them first with my soldering iron and then I'm going to feed them through. It will be a hell of a lot easier. We have thinned the wires, so I'm going to feed the wire loom now from the back and then hopefully it comes out in the proper place. Here we go. See the wire? So now I'm going to bend it over a bit and tie it down. All right, so let's place the light bulbs in. You might want to squeeze it a bit to make sure they are really tight. There we go. The fender is installed, the lights are installed, so now I can put back the wheel. And then I'm going to do the other side. And this is the end result of Old Sporty.